everyone, Mike from My Techie here, here to talk to you about a new program called Make MKV. MKV Make MKV is a new program that allows you to take your DVD content and your Blu-ray content and put it in your drive and rip it to an MKV file. What is an MKV file? MKV, aka Matroska, basically came out around three years ago and was and is aiming to take over your WMVs, your AVIs, your MOVs, your Swifts, all these other formats that are video containers but don't base themselves on the EBML or the extensible binary meta language. So all that tech terms in the one, it's basically the new video format that's coming out and hopefully going to be taking over everything. So an MKV file is really easy to play back. You can use any application to play it back. Basically now, uh, Windows Media Player, I believe it's Windows 7 does support it. If it doesn't, there's always open source applications out there such as VLC Player, such as, uh, what is it, Home Media Player Classic. If you're in, I think, Linux, you have another application, but I think VLC Player will even play it in Linux fine. Personally, if you're on Windows, I recommend Home Media Player Classic, Home Cinema Edition. If you're on Mac, I recommend, or Linux, I recommend VLC Player. Both two great awesome players that can definitely play back almost any content that you guys provide it. So getting down to what it does and to do a demonstration here, I'm going to go ahead and you can get make MKV from the website makemkv.com slash download and you can just download it for Windows or Mac like I said. Unfortunately it's not available for Linux just quite yet. They are aiming to do that when it becomes out of beta. As you can see, it's still in beta, and it will be free while it is in beta. They have given warnings and on their forums and such, saying that once it exceeds beta and goes out of beta, it will be a paid-for application, but still a, a reasonably priced application. So as you can see, I have the Make MKV beta up here right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and drop in a, a disc that I really like. This is a uh, my John Mayer Any Given Thursday DVD. Uh, he did a great job in this DVD, so if you're a fan of John Mayer or if you like his music, definitely go and buy the DVD. It's only 10 bucks. So I want to go and back this DVD up, so I'm going to throw it in my drive here. And we're going to see it pop up in the Make MKV here. As you can see, it's loading. It recognized the disc right away. Saw that it's putting something in the drive. And it's super simple here. It goes and reads the format. It says, okay, hey, you're using... Uh, John Mayer, any given Thursday, you're using a new format. So I'm going to go ahead and tell I want to put it into a custom location by clicking on the little wrench there. And don't put it in the auto location. We're going to go ahead and put it in the custom. And we're going to select my D drive. That's fine. And apply. And we're going to click on this little icon DVD to disk, basically. So it's going to go ahead and read the format of the disc. It's going to say, hey, you know, you're doing a DVD. You got this, you know, this, 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 and this format. We're going to go ahead and return this. And so what it's going ahead and doing is basically breaking out the DVD as if, you know, if you have like extras or the main movie, so on and so forth. Kind of like what DVD Fab did back in the day. Uh, and it will allow you to say, okay, what files do you want to go ahead and save to an MKV file? And we're going to find that out here in a second. All right. So as you can see, it says you know giving a couple little errors here for a bad request. Um, this is completely different. It has to do with the decrypting that I had to do. So as you can see here, we have the four titles, one six point two gigs. The rest are little ones. These are all the extras. I don't really care about the extras. I only want the main title. So I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck here. If you expand the title, you'll notice that you have also the ability to see what kind of content is provided. In this case, the video content is formatted MPEG-2, and the uh, audio content is going to be LPCM-2, 3.2. So this is the IC3H channel, 2x1. Two, two and uh, I don't need just the dual channel, so it auto-unchecks it, uh, auto it by itself because this will actually take the same formatting. So as you can see, the Dolby Digital is the codec. If I highlight here, you can see Dolby Digital is off the codec, but it's only two channels rather than six channels. And if you actually parse only two channels it, or six channels, it will your radio, actually your computer will understand. Don't only put it into two channels. Uh, hard to understand, but if you have an, a good audio card, it will understand it, and it'll either put it in six channels or two channels based on your outputting I/O that you have. So if we go ahead and click on Make MKV here, you're going to see it's going to go ahead and start ripping through this. Uh, it tells you how much free space I have left. I'm running a little low on this drive uh, because it is only my laptop here. And based on how fast your machine is, it depends on how long it's going to take. Personally, 
this is only an old T2800 or something of that nature. Let's see here. Yeah, it's only a 2080. So, I mean, this, this thing is only going to go relatively slow. It's picking up a little bit, but if you have, a, like, a dual core, like, a, a core 2, I should say, or quad core, this thing will rip. I mean, it's one of the fastest, actually, encoder applications that I have seen. Uh, and later on, if you'll notice that once it's done, I'm not going to go ahead and fast forward and show you, but once it's done, you'll go ahead and see, you're going to get a file that looks like this. As you can see, it names it for you, puts the MQD extension on for you, and it actually even shows you how much it's growing and how fast it's growing. So right now, it's already at 100 megabytes, even though that the Windows Explorer cache is not showing that's 100 megabytes. In reality, it is 100 megabytes in the background. So once it's done, it's going to go ahead and tell me, hey, you know, finish successfully, give me a little dialog box, I click OK, and you'll be able to open up that file. Uh, as you can see, I have it tied to the Home Media Player Classics Home Cinema Edition. So if we go here, I'll just to show you what that one looks like. Media Player Classic Home Cinema. You can go grab that from Google. Great playback for Windows. It supports almost any codec. And if it doesn't support the codec, you can definitely go ahead and download the k Light Codec Pack. Again, that's K hyphen or dash light, L-I-T-E, codec pack. And you can just get the standard edition. You don't need to get anything else. And it actually has Home Media Player Classic in there, not the Home Cinema Edition. Now, the difference into that we can go to many many different details but I'm just going to go and quickly overview it uh, one home media player classic does not allow you to, if you have an NVIDIA card within your system to slipstream the CUDA technology i.e. basically processing everything on your video card rather than processing it on your processor uh, this is a huge benefit and a huge factoid when you're doing uh, huge processing even such as this I mean you have other programs called like I think it's what RIP to 264 or something like that. It's a super simple program, but it also allows you to utilize the CUDA technology to rip your DVDs and your Blu-rays uh, to MKV format or H.264 format, which will allow you at that point in time to go ahead and keep it as a local copy, just like an MKV, and uh, but also at the same time. It, about five to six times faster because it's using that CUDA technology, using that way faster RAM that's on that graphics card rather than it's in your PC. So, just a quick overview of what actually M Make MKV is all about. It's a great application. Uh, again, I'm not going to wait for it and, and come back to it, but you'll notice that once it's done, it will go ahead and just say, hey, click OK here. As long as you have a, play a player that will play the file, you should be fine. Again, I recommend the two op options I recommend. It's VLC Player or Windows Media Player Classic home cinema edition. Well, this is Mike from MyTechie. I hope you have a wonderful day and hope this was helpful. Bye-bye.